and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the books I hope you're all having a wonderful week today I'm going to be doing as you can see from this empty space on my shelves and the color of my top and the color of my knife and my nails my knives my nails um, I am gradually doing a uh, book bookshelf tour um, but I'm not doing it in one big whack because one who can be bothered to watch that two who can be bothered to make it not me I'm doing it in sections um, of color so I've already done pink books which I will link down below um, I got this idea from the wonderful Lena um, whose channel I love and adore Lena Nobbs' channel you all know that channel um, but I will link that down below as well because she's been working her way through her books doing different colors and today is green now if you'd have asked me how many green books you thought I had I would have said loads I mean look at all those blue ones when we get to blue town that is going to be a long video um, but actually not that many green books um, this is just a nice opportunity for me to show you some books that I've got on my shelves where I got them from what they're about have I read them have I not read them you will find that the majority of the books on these shelves I haven't read um, when I've read books, so these are, these are books, unread books, uh, majority, um, if I have read them and I love them, I keep them on the top of this shelf, you can't see, but on the top top, um, there is a favourite shelf, um, and if I don't, if I don't give them sort of four or five stars, I either lend them out to other people, to then sort of lend out amongst other people, and then there's a, a whole variety of places that I, I also give books. My sister is a teacher at a, 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 um, a, a secondary school, so any YA books go to her. Um, I work in a diabetes centre and we've got a, um, a, a shelf there where we sell books um, and the money from that goes to Diabetes UK. I give them to friends, give them to family, sometimes I give them away on here. So yeah, you'll find that a lot of these... The point of me talking all that crap was that <laughs> a lot of these books are unread. Let's start with some of the unread books. Uh, the first one is Wow No Thank You by Samantha Irby. This is a collection of essays. I've read We're Never Meeting in Real Life um, by Samantha Irby. Um, Irby. Uh, that's got a little kitty on the front. This is a green one with a little bunny on the front and I believe that I showed the pink one which has a little hedgehog on the back, uh, on the front, in the um, in the, the pink version of this video. Um, so these are all about, um, so this one, so I mean Samantha Irby writes wonderful essays about feminism and black feminism and what it's like to be a black woman in America um, and I very much enjoyed her first essay collection. haven't read either of these two but I think this one is more sort of like reflecting on, she she turns 40 and these are uh, um, essays which are reflected on her turning 40. Came out this year, April 2020, looking forward to, to getting around to it. Yes, I am. The next one is one of our booktube beloved friends. Uh, this is the Bookshop book by Jane Campbell. Now, I have read this and I've hung on to it because I was very fond of it. Oh, do you know, I think I've been bitten on my knee. I've got a really itchy knee. Um, this is a book, if you're a reader or a bookshop lover, then this is the book for you. This is a book um, where it's a non-fiction book where Jen has done a sort of deep dive into um, a, a whole host of uh, bookshops um, throughout the world. This not only comes with information about these bookshops and sort of like mini interviews um, with these bookshop owners and, and, and people who use the bookshops, but also has lovely photos throughout. And like some of these are just, like for instance this, which is a, book, uh, a bookshop called Tell a Story in Portugal, which is in a little camper van. This one, in, uh, which is in a cathedral in the Netherlands. I read this a few years ago. I think it might be time for me to revisit this because I had such a lovely time reading it. Like I said, if you're into, um, if you're into reading or, or books, uh, if you're into reading or books and you're watching this video because it's a booktube channel, this is a great gift to buy and also a good something to ask for I think if you're uh, if you're after if you're after a book but yeah lovely really really love this really, I'm, I am gonna revisit that I am um, next up I've got a proof of a book which came out in 2017 which I still haven't read um, and that's The Party by Elizabeth Day what I will also say is that you will find that some of these aren't green on the front cover but they do have a green spine because I have all of my books outward uh, spine facing now um, I was sent this by the publisher it's published by fourth state um, and I so every so often if I haven't read a proof on my shelf it does get to the point where I think well that's been and gone now will I actually ever read this now the reason I've hung on to this is because I love Elizabeth Day's podcast so much so since um, since uh, Elizabeth Day was a fiction writer she's now written a non-fiction book called how to fail and off the back of that she or was it the other way around she either had a podcast called How to Fail and then made a book of it or did a book of it called How to Fail and then did a podcast of it. Either way, I consumed both. I've read the book and I listen to the podcast regularly and actually the podcast this week has got Bernadine Everisto on it. I haven't listened to it yet but I'm very, very excited to, to listen to that. Um, and yeah, as I said, this is a book that, this is a fiction book that she wrote. I haven't read any of her fiction before um, and want to get round to it. It's about a party. I don't really know what else it's about. Let's have a look. 
It's a gripping story of obsession and betrayal, privilege and hypocrisy set in the unassailable heart of the British establishment. So it's about, it's at a 40th birthday party. Martin's got a secret. He knows something about Ben's 40th birthday party, something you'll never tell. It's a secret that will bind the two of them together for the best part of 25 years. So yeah, I, I will get round to reading this, um, but that's why I've sort of hung on to this for slightly longer. Uh, the next one, I'm gonna have to have a good old itch at that. <clears throat> knee, you know. Uh, the next one is a um, translated book. This is The Guest Cat by Takashi Hiradi. Um, this is uh, translated from the Japanese. It's about a couple in their 30s um, and a cat just comes to stay with them and I think their life starts, um, it says here, one day a cat invites itself into their small kitchen. She is a beautiful creature. She leaves but the next day comes again and then again and again. New small joys accompany the cat. The days have more light and colour. It just sounds very sweet. It says it's an exceptionally moving and beautiful novel about the nature of life and the way it feels to live it. Stop it. This sounds very cute. So yeah, haven't read this before, but I haven't read this yet, but we'll do. Another one I haven't read is Wilder Girls uh, by Rory Power. Um, this is, oh, I do want to read this, but maybe not now. Um, it's, if you're watching this on uh, in the future, it's 2020. We're currently in the height of a pandemic. And it says here... It's been 18 months since the Racks to School for Girls was put under quarantine, since the tox hit and pulled Hetty's life out from under her. It started slow. First the teachers died, one by one. Then it began to infect the students, turning their bodies strange. Left to fend for themselves on their island home, the girls don't dare wander outside the school's fence where the tox has made the woods wild and dangerous. As it seeps into everything, they wait for the cure that they were promised. So yeah, I will get round to reading this, but maybe not now. But I love this front cover. That's got, like, th this bright pink on a green cover with a drawing of a woman on it. I'm into that. So yeah, very good. This one I have read. This is The Restless Girls by Jessie Burton and illustrated by Angela Barrett. This is a retelling of, um, is it 12 Dancing Princesses? I always forget the original, what it was actually called. It, it's a retelling of a fairy tale. I think it's called, it's either called 12 Dancing Princesses or 10 Dancing Princesses. Um, and it's a lovely retelling of that. And it's got beautiful illustrations. It, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous book, and I had such a lovely time reading it and um, and uh, watch, looking at all the illustrations. Look at it. It's like pieces of art. Absolutely love it. Love Jessie Burton's writing. Um, really, really enjoyed The Muse. Um, and, uh, yeah, very... Just, just think this is gorgeous. Another good, another good gift, guys. Another good gift. Another one that I've read, which is also make a good gift. <laughs> it, it just, I just feel like books that are beautiful on the outside and also have good shit on the inside, good gifts. Uh, and this is Spring by um, Ali Smith. This is the, uh, the, the, how would you read them? I think you've read them autumn, winter, spring, summer. Yeah, because we're just getting to the last ones. This was a seasonal quartet. Um, and Ali Smith has released um, <coughs> a book every season um, since these started, starting with autumn. When was this published? Because it's spring now, 2020. So this should have been 2019. <laughs> and my calculations are correct. Um, and each of these um, is sort of um, quite <clears throat> current. So it tells of things that have, have happened in recent times. Um, Brexit being a theme that goes on. This is about, the, I believe, this one. Now I have read this a long time ago. But I think this is um, to do with immigration. Um, so it says... Yes, I was right. With an eye to the migrancy of story over time and reflect, uh, riffing on Pericles, one of Shakespeare's most resistant and rollicking works, Ali Smith tells the impossible tale of an impossible time. In a time of walls and lockdown, lockdown before lockdown even happened, Smith opens the door. These are like, I mean, I haven't read any Ali Smith apart from this seasonal quartet, um, and I really, really enjoy it. I particularly enjoyed the winter one. Have I got to my winter one yet? Oh no, that'll come in grey books land. So yeah, green spring. Uh, this is another a proof um, that I haven't read and I lent it to my friend Emma and she found it very very, very valuable and I will also get around to reading it. So as I said, yellow front cover but does have a green spine. This is The Squiggly Career oops, by Helen Tupper and Sarah Ellis. Um, it says here, the five skills you need to succeed in work today. Now this is a book all about what it's like to have a, a career that isn't linear. So not starting for instance, start as a classroom assistant, become a teacher, become head of year, become um, head of uh, upper school, become head teacher, the, like that sort of thing. It's all about going all around the houses and things like that. Now, I currently work for the NHS. 
um, in a position where I look after a team of doctors and nurses um, in the diabetes centre. Um, and my career is uh, has not stuck because I feel like I've got like side hustles as well. So like I love doing this. I love making videos for you guys. I've got a, um, a, a book club on top of this that I run, which I really really enjoy doing. Um, and I feel like it will be interesting to do to to, to read through this and do these like um, do these exercises throughout to find out what bits from what jobs I can pull from like I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be very, very valuable. Emma found value in it. I trust her. Um, she's been in my life a good few years now. I trust her. Um, and I think this will be helpful. So I'm doing that. The next three I'm going to show you all together. Um, these were bought from the, um, the, the, there's a volunteers desk in the hospital. That hospital, I'm getting a lot of, getting a lot of uh, mileage out of uh, my job today. But um, there's a, uh, a charity desk, um, where a volunteers desk, where volunteers sit um, it, within the hospital. And there is a, um, a couple of bookshelves there which sell books. Uh, and they are 50p each for a paperback or a pound for a hard back now I've got a feeling when I bought these they only charged me £1.50 these are Daphne du Maurier books um, that I didn't already have the, um, the 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 paperbacks of I collect the Daphne du Maurier are, any, are there any of them in this no they're not uh, the Virago modern classics with the stripy spines and then the really beautiful front covers have I got one I can just show you here and now yes Oh God, it's gonna fall, everything's gonna fall. Oh no, it's matches, the worst thing to fall. This is Mary Ann by Daphne du Maurier. Um, and then the spines look like that. So they're the ones that I actually do collect, but I got these, I mean, there's not much to show you, they all look exactly the same. Um, but one is called Not After Midnight. Never heard of that one before. Hungry Hill, which I have heard of, and I believe that there's a, um, there's a, a Virago modern classic for that. And The Flight of the Falcon, um, which I've also heard of, but yeah, these, I mean, how, I wonder where, where they, uh, they've got a lovely little picture of Daphne, Daffer, Daffers in the front. I wonder um, when these were actually published. And I'll never know because it's not written in there. Here we go. This book is a product of Heron Books. 1965, these were published. So yeah, so I haven't actually read any of these, but it's good to have some Daphne du Maurier books that I don't have the... Um, the Virago Modern Classics of, and I imagine I will get around to reading them eventually. Who knows when that will be. Oh, the next one's a Christmas book. Very excited. One that I haven't read yet and I'm going to read this year. Uh, it's quite a recent purchase. This is Royal Holiday by Jasmine Gallori. I mean, look at that. Green with pink. I've already said I love that. Sparkly pink at that. Sparkly pink dress. Um, and this is, uh, well, it's actually the fourth in a series of which I haven't read any of the series, but this is a Christmas one from the series. Um, and um, it's about Vivian Forrest, who joins her daughter Maddie's work trip to England um, at Christmas time or the holidays, as the Americans say. Sorry about that awful accent. Um, is it just, a, is, it, is it North America in general who says the holidays? Do you all say holidays or do you say Christmas? Because holiday for me means like summer holiday, but. Christmas. Um, so yeah, so uh, Vivian joins her daughter Maddie on a work trip to England as a, she, she works as a stylist, I think. Is she a stylist? Yeah, to, to style a royal family member. Um, and while she's there, she meets Malcolm Hudson. He's worked for the Queen for years and has never given a personal private tour until now. So it's a love story set at Christmas. Uh, it sounds like it's gonna be super fun. I can't wait to read it. I'm really, really excited about it. Christmas. Christmas and loveliness. Right, we're getting to the, the last the last ones now. This is The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. Um, this is, I believe, a series of, oh, it's one of those beautiful books. Do you know what? I love a French flap. These are called French flaps. I learned that on BookTube. I wouldn't have known otherwise. French flaps, these are called, and they're just so lovely. I feel like this front cover is beautiful. Look, it's got like a green ocean with houses and spires and somebody in a boat. Um, and this sounds like, it, I believe this is short stories. The End We Start From. Does it say anything more in there? No, but it says here, as floodwaters close over London, a woman gives birth to her first child. Days later, they're forced to leave home in search of safety, excuse me, words. They head north through Britain that's changed beyond recognition. A fam familiar place made dangerous, it's becoming, his people become refugees. Yet against all the odds, the baby thrives. He learns to smile, to laugh and to crawl. And as their story unfolds and the country falls apart around them, this mother's world promises new life and fresh hope. Maybe it's not short stories, but anyway. I'm, I feel like it sounds great. Uh, the next one is one that I have read and I really, really love this book. I've read it in 
this and also listen to it on audiobook. I listen to it on audiobook like two or three times now. I quite like to, to, to revisit it. Um, it's Eat, Sweat, Play, How Sport Can Change Our Lives by Anna Kessel. Um, so I, I really, I mean, the tagline for this is sports for everyone, isn't it? Um, and I always lived my life, particularly my life at school, um, thinking that nah, sport's just not for me. Just don't like it. Don't, don't really like following the rules. Don't like that. And, and I've always believed that. But this gets you really pumped for it, you know. And this was sort of like some of the driving forces, particularly when I found out I had um, diabetes earlier this year. Listen to this to get myself in, back into running and it really worked. It's got interviews with people that I love in it, like Mel C, Sporty Spice from the Spice Girls, Judy Murray, um, who is Andy Murray, the tennis player's mum. She's also a tennis coach. She was on Strictly a few years ago. Love her. Um, and uh, just really, really enjoyed it. Look, it looks at um, sport and period, sport and pregnancy, sport and motherhood, sport and diet, etc, um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And just women and sport. I feel it's a really, really great book. And the audiobook's great. The only thing I will say about the audiobook is that Anna Kessel has the slowest voice. Ever. So I have to listen to it really sped up in order to sort of keep up with my brain. But yeah, Eat Sweat Play, either by a book or by audio. Really, really great book. Loved it. Then the last two, two really different books. I'll finish on the absolute spectacular one. Um, but this is You, the book of you. Daily micro actions for a happier, healthier you. Now, I believe this is Jamie Oliver affiliated. Yeah, here he is. Smugly stood there in his blue shirt and um, this is about um yeah it's about micro actions and how you could do things you can do in a whole year um a different little thing you can do every day um to sort of make yourself a better you so it says get ready to start living a better life for you um now i um i'm the sort of person who loves to give things a go for instance i started this on the 11th of january 2016 how many days did i get in oh further than i thought 12. <laughs> I did 12 days, but then never did any more. But it has things like, so for instance, choose whole grains, plan a weekend activity, go paperless for one new bill, find an old picture of your family, snack smart, allow time for boredom. And it looks at different, different micro actions you can change daily um, and splits them into to separate things like mind, love, move, food. I think they might be the only ones. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I love the idea of it. As is always with me, love the idea of it, following through on it. Not always my forte or, or biggest strength, but I think it's a really great book. Um, and then the last uh, book, which is a green spine, a bluey green spine, but it still counts as green spine, is this illustrated edition of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, this is illustrated by Alice Petullo. I've just read this this year. Um, I took part in something in June called Pride and Prejudis, where I read um, uh, Pride and Prejudice and I read books um, that were associated with Pride and Prejudice, retellings, adaptations, etc., sequels. Um, and this is beautiful. This, again... Could this be the, the the one, I think this might be like an unofficial sort of like, oh, also, you could probably buy this as a gift for someone. The illustrations in this are beautiful. The muted colour palette is just absolutely wonderful. Um, it's got these beautiful, I don't know what you call that, sprayed edges with like flower pattern on it. There, I won't show you the big, the big, the big event, which is Pemberley, but I'll show you some of my favourite ones in here. This one with all the food, <laughs> the book is falling open at the pages that I love the most. So this one we've all, this is like a banquet. So what I like about the fact that there's double, do you want to come and show everyone your new haircut, Minnie? Come on. I'm not going to get you the whole way because you're very dramatic. Uh, this, so like, not only will you have like half pages, I'll just show you Minnie while she's here. Minnie's had a haircut. <gasps> Look how tiny she is. Look how tiny you are. Oh, don't struggle. It's okay, baby. Oh, that was dramatic, wasn't it? She had a haircut. She normally has a haircut early on in the year, like April time. But because of uh, quarantine and lockdown, she's only just had the haircut done. Look at this tail. It's just got a fluffy bit on the end. Um, but she's feeling a bit, she feels a bit sorry for herself for a couple of days afterwards because, I mean, she's been <laughs> she's been shaved and just left with little booties in. Um, but yeah. So yeah, these have like, also they have like little sort of half pages of illustrations. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's so lovely. It's really nice. I really like the way the letters are done as well. The letters are done in a different font. I don't know if you can see that. That just looks like a white page. Um, but yeah, really, really great book. So those are my green books. Let me know if you've read any of those green books. Let me know what's your favourite looking book. I always like to ask questions at the end of this. We can have a little chat in the, in the middle. But what can I really say about a pile of green books? Have you got any green books? <laughs> Is that a question to ask? I hope you're doing very, very well. And I'll see you all again soon for another butcher video. I've got to pick these all up now and do the thumbnail. You won't have to stay around for that. It's a bit awkward.